Today I'm going to be looking at something rather different. So I'm going to be tearing down this TP-Link wireless power line adapter, uh, which is intended to basically work as a wireless extender, but instead of just repeating a wireless signal, it gets its backhaul, so it gets its connectivity over the home net home wiring with the theory that that should increase capacity. Um, in terms of sort of just general radio stuff, um, amateur radio enthusiasts will probably double hate this product because um, it's emitting radio waves on the 2.4 gigahertz band as well as the 5 giga, as well as the um, lower frequencies used on the power line part of it. But anyway, I'm going to crack it open uh, so we can see what's inside. So the first step necessary is to remove the two top screws and then for the rest annoyingly it has these annoying clip on things which make this rather harder to break into than it really has to be but that's just the way things are made nowadays really there we go so that's that should be that open but oh yeah I remember there's also some some of them at the bottom there as well so then this board just comes out, so if we just uh, take a look at it, uh, you can see that the um, main chip there is a Realtek RTL8196C. Um, there's the two Ethernet jacks at the bottom there, um, and sort of the sort of a metal board, which looks like sat with a heatsink on top. So, and also there's the two 2.4 gigahertz antennas there. Uh, which are walls in 1903A1. Used from this is that the bottom board here is the sort of wireless and networking part, whereas the top part of the board is ultimately really the power supply. But of course, what you can't forget with these is this gets its pack. This this gets its sort of network backhaul link through the mains wiring, so some signal has to penetrate through the power supply. Which is why I've got a feeling is why there's um, the three sets of connectors, interboard connects, um, and basically where all the fun happens is at the little inductor uh, by the slot there. Because if you look at the power supply board, uh, the main the main voltage capacitor DC cap capacitor is there. So on this side of the board, you have all the sort of power distribution components as you can see by the nice big sort of isolation gap there whereas on the right side of the board you can see that after the inductor the uh, pins, the uh, tracks travel rather close to each other and sort of in a paired fashion which shows that there's definitely some radio related shenanigans going on here um, and also if we just twist the board over again and try and have a look inside I mean, it's possible to see that, um, well, it's quite hard to see, really, but um, there's a lot of quite, well, I wouldn't say precision, but there's some sort of specialist integrated circuits on that side, whereas the other side of the board is merely just the sort of power current distribution side of the board, and therefore, um, yeah, it doesn't really have any specialised integrated circuits on it. Yeah, it's very clear to see the, where sort of all the magic happens, if you like. But, I mean, that's just a quick look at what one of these looks like inside. I mean, it is basically just sort of an access point, slash, in this case, switch, um, bolted onto a power supply, really, with a separate winding to transport the little wireless signals used to carry the data um, into the um, wireless board. So if we just look at the chips themselves, the RT, uh, RTL8196C, which is that one, is an integrated system on chip AP controller. So it basically does most of the work here. So it's a 400 megahertz um, clock rate, sports up to 5 ports, 10100, as you can see there. There is in fact only 2 ports on this. Um, and yeah, it's basically the brains behind the operation. The chip above, um, the chip above it, so that other Realtek one, the much smaller one, it's basically just a MIMO, 
uh, MIMO wireless LAN solution uh, for sort of end based technology. So if I just try and get a close up there, so you should, yeah, just be able to see that there alongside the one I've just mentioned there. In terms of other chips, I think the chip under under there is like some sort of memory chip or something and also on the power board got doing these close ups is quite hard there is also an Atheros chip which I can't actually sort of read the numbers off there and yes that um, chip is a 64 megabit high speed CMOS memory chip